Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those within the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome to Insights, I'm Sherry Stewart. I'm joined today by Commissioner Steve Lett, who is here to talk with me about uh, Michigan's redistricting process. Commissioner Lett, thank you for spending time with me today. Well, thank you for having me. We're uh, always pleased to be out and about in the state uh, talking with uh, the citizens and the people who who talk to citizens like yourself. Well, there's a lot to talk about, uh, certainly, uh, Commissioner, with this redistricting process. As we know, this is the first time in Michigan's uh, history that an independent citizen uh, redistricting commission um, is charged with uh, redrawing our congressional district. So let's just start there. Can we start with the background of how this came about uh, in 2018? In 2018, there was a uh, referendum uh, elect election at that time, mm -hmm. and uh, the referendum was 18-2, right. and it amended the Constitution so that a commission of 13 citizens uh, were selected to do the redistricting in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, the 10-year uh, decennial census is supposed to come out April 1st. It didn't quite make that, hasn't quite made it yet, but we're still working. Uh, so that's how we got to where we are. The uh, process was uh, you had to fill out an application. Mm -hmm. There, fairly simple application. There were about 9,300 of my closest friends who applied. Uh, and out of that, there was a selection process so that the uh, various areas in the state were represented, so not everybody came from Alpena, say. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a balance between uh, men and women, a balance between urban and uh, rural, and then it got down to 200 people. And uh, the Senate uh, and House of Reps uh, leaders, uh, Democrats and Republicans could strike 20 names. They did, that left 180, and from that, there were 13 that were chosen. Four Republicans, four Democrats, and five independents. I'm one of the independents. So that makeup again uh, of the commission, you said that it is made up of, is it 13 commissioners? 13 people, okay. so we can't have a tie vote. Right, okay. And so, uh, Commissioner Lett, I understand that you are a semi-retired attorney. Why did you want to be a part of this process? Because uh, it, it's a, uh, obviously it's a new process. Uh, this will be the uh, first uh, Independent Citizens Commission in Michigan to do this. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be elected the first chairman by uh, my fellow commissioners. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, it will be an opportunity on a first time basis to have citizens drawing the lines and trying to represent the citizenship instead of protecting congressional districts for uh, the representatives or senators or congresspeople who are there. Now, as part of this commission, you all have a lot of uh, heavy lifting to do, and I understand part of it is uh, the town hall meetings and uh, educational meetings that you're having around the state. So walk me through the process. So now the commission is in place, of course, and you've been in place for a couple of months now. What are you doing now? I know you've had a couple meetings, so walk us through the beginning of this uh, redistricting process. When we started out, of course, um, we're brand new, so we didn't know anything. And uh, we asked uh, some, uh, California and Arizona had done, gone through this process before. So we had, we invited them in to talk with us. We listened to what they uh, had to say. We uh, then uh, hired some staff. We hired an executive director, Sue Ann uh, Hammersmith. We hired a, uh, a general counsel, Julianne Pastula and we hired a communications and outreach director, Edward Woods III. So we have a staff uh, okay. that got us going. 
Then we set about to hire experts, a map drawing expert, a voting rights attorney uh, for the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the types of things we did to get going. Then we set a schedule of public hearings, as you said. Right. Uh, we had to have at least 10. We scheduled uh, 16, and we went all over the state. The closest one to Alpena was Gaylord right. uh, for the northern. Uh, we just finished up in Grand Rapids well, a couple of weeks ago. And so we had we did uh, we did sixteen. We had eight. We had another one just last week in Benton Harbor. Okay. Uh, we we will do uh, one in Traverse City on August twenty sixth. So if anybody from Alpena chooses to come up and uh, attend the uh, Traverse City Grand Resort, play a little golf, go to the casino, uh, listen to us. Uh, we won't be as exciting as all of that, but uh, you would be able to speak your piece and say, here's what we think a community of interest is, or here's what we think the, how the line should be drawn for the districts uh, involving Alpena as far as the U.S. Congress, State Senate, and State House go. Uh, Commissioner, are you, uh, is this a volunteer role? I think we should even clarify that. Are you paid commissioners or is this all volunteer? We are paid. Uh, the, the budget was set by the uh, citizens in the amendment. We get uh, 20, our, our budget is 25% of the general budget for the Secretary of State. Okay. So we, uh, there's a number and they said, okay, here's, here's your budget. And we had a budget and uh, we also were a, uh, had the right to uh, vote uh, whatever not whatever, but an amount of money that we would be paid, which we did, and we're being paid that amount of money. And they cover the expenses when we're out uh, in areas where you know, we have to spend the night or whatever. Well, let's uh, continue to chat, uh, Commissioner Let We want to take a quick break, but when we come back, we want to talk about uh, some of the feedback uh, that uh, you can share from those town hall meetings that you've been having around the state. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. Insights will return after these messages. Welcome back to Insights. We're continuing our conversation today with Commissioner Steve Lett. He is on the uh, Michigan Redistricting Commission, and uh, we want to thank you again for spending time with us. I know at the break you were talking about uh, the town hall meetings that you're having around the state as part of your requirement to start drawing the lines uh, for uh, Michigan's uh, congressional districts. Can you tell me about some of the feedback that you're getting? And I know that uh, these meetings can be found online as well, but can you share some of that feedback? Sure. Uh, and just a minor point of clarification, we consider these public hearings, but the, the, in fact, the first person who spoke at the uh, Gaylord meeting uh, was from Alpena and talked about uh, communities of interest mm -hmm. uh, and basically said they thought their district was pretty good. They liked it. They didn't especially want it uh, uh, changed. Mm -hmm. uh, they were concerned with clean water, clean air. Sure. Uh, and uh, the, the Senate district, they thought, should kind of go to the west, since it's hard to go to the east, out into the lake. Yeah. But we're seeing, basically, themes develop in these meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, one big theme is uh, uh, be fair. Sure. That's what we want you to do, is we want you to be fair. Another one is to uh, draw the lines uh, compactly, don't make them... Uh, gerrymandered, don't make them look like a salamander, which is where the word comes from, um, and uh, make them competitive. Make rural areas, rural district, make urban areas, urban districts. Those are some of the themes we hear. Certainly up north and on the west coast and on the east coast, uh, we're, we're hearing, okay, we have shoreline that we're concerned with. Sure. We have uh, tourism that we're concerned with. Uh, you hear farmers will come in and say, we're, consider we're concerned with agriculture. 
uh, cities will come in and say, we're concerned with our communities. We're concerned with uh, educational boundaries. So uh, everybody has their own theory of community of interest, and they have been sharing those very freely with us, or they can also share them online. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they can go to michigan.gov slash micrc, and uh, we have a what we call a portal. They can leave a written testimony or a written comment. They can draw a map. There's a district or app on our portal, and they can click on that, and they can draw a map, and they can submit it to us for our consideration. And a number of people have, have done that. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to come in and talk to us. Mm -hmm. As I said, we've uh, completed 16, actually 17 uh, public hearings. We're going to do another one in Traverse on August 26th. Uh, we did one in Benton Harbor. We're going to do uh, several at colleges. Uh, we're going to be at five different colleges uh, in, the, in the upcoming. And once we do all that, and once we make uh, a map and get the, the three maps will be drawn, congressional, U.S. congressional, the state senate and state reps. So we'll draw three maps. Once we get uh, proposals down, then we will be required to have an additional five meetings for public comment. We're going, right now we have eight planned. Uh, and the one closest uh, to up north will we'll go back to Gaylord. You talk about uh, the meetings, the public meetings where people can come and, and voice their concerns. Are you getting a lot of community participation? I know you mentioned the one in Gaylord. Do you believe that um, or do you think that uh, people really understand that this really is a historic time, that they can be really involved um, in um, having some input or some say in what our new congressional districts will look like? The people who come into the meetings, who show up at the meetings, certainly know that that they have a say and, mm -hmm. and they voice their opinion. We would have liked to have had more people come in, uh, but who shows up is who shows up. Right. And the emails, the portals, and the, the, those are the other ways that they can be uh, participate. We did a poll a survey early on to see what the understanding of the citizens seemed to be. And it wasn't tremendously high, so we have been trying uh, in a concerted effort to get the word out so that people can come in and talk to us, uh, watch us on uh, the various channels that we're on, and submit uh, testimony or maps. Hopefully, we're making some headway. Mm -hmm. Regardless if we do or don't, we're still going to draw the maps. We're going to take a quick break uh, again, one uh, final break here, Commissioner Let When we come back, we want to talk about uh, some of the learnings, um, as you say, and as we know, this is certainly the first time in Michigan's history. So we'd love to hear from you uh, what uh, the commissioners are learning. What are you learning about this whole uh, process? It seems, you know, pretty exciting uh, to be a part of this and to be able to witness this. So we'd like to talk about that when we come back after the break. Insights will return after these messages. Welcome back to Insights. We're continuing our conversation with Commissioner Steve Lett. And at the break, uh, Commissioner, I was uh, getting ready to ask you about some of the learnings. As we know, this has been a historic process, the first time in our state's history that we have this citizen-led commission to redraw the line. So with anything new, there's learnings that come with that. What are the uh, commissioners and yourself, what are you guys learning as you are part of this process? Well, I think there's, there's two tracks that we're looking at at quote learning one is what are the people what are the citizens what do they want us to know right and i think the biggest uh, single thing that they have taught us is they want us to start over hmm. they want us to be fair they want uh they want to get rid of the gerrymandering you can look at some of the districts in the state and you look at those and you say what were they thinking about mm -hmm. So that, I think, is uh, the main thing that is a repeated theme at every meeting. The other tract is we're learning what it takes to redistrict, to draw maps. Mm -hmm. And we uh, have hired a map drawing uh, firm, and they provide us with uh, the computer program to do this. 
uh, and we have, while we haven't drawn any Michigan maps, we have uh, practiced on Ohio, because uh, we couldn't practice on Michigan, so we practiced on Ohio. And the thing that we have learned is, it's hard. It is hard to draw these maps and keep everything in uh, perspective. And the perspective, quite frankly, is number one, you have to have equal population in all of the districts. So you can't have one district, a congressional district, say that's 200 people in the district and one with 100 people in the district. They all have to be 200. Same thing with the House and Senate. So uh, the, the other thing uh, that we've learned is you have to pay attention to the Voting Rights Act. And uh, those, uh, uh, we have a, a Voting Rights Act attorney who is giving us lessons uh, on, on that. So those are the types of things that people will come along and say, okay, well, well, you know, just use counties. Well, we can't just use counties, county lines, because uh, it won't work. You won't have e equal population. You know, you're going to have to expand Alpena County to take in more. And if you look at the district maps now, you can see that how that works. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the types of things we're learning. So you have to have equal population. You have to have uh, contiguous, compact, and contiguous districts. In other words, you can't have Alpena over here on the east side of the state and Traverse City on the west side of the state in the same district. Awesome. They don't work. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to be somewhat compact. Then the third thing that the citizens adopted was communities of interest. So we, we need to pay attention to what a community of interest is. In Alpena, certainly the coast Mm -hmm. uh, is a community of interest. Consider the community of interest, sure. Uh, I would assume tourism is a mm -hmm. community of interest up there. Uh, so there are a number of things that are communities of interest, and those were, is the third thing that we're supposed to look at. We're not supposed to look at parties. We're not supposed to look at candidates. We're not supposed to look at incumbents. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we're not to consider when we're drawing these. So those are the types of things uh, that we have uh, learned that we're going to have to deal with. Now, can you tell me this, Commissioner, what are some of the deadlines that we're looking at? So you guys have a lot of, of work to do. I refer to it as heavy lifting over these next uh, several months. Uh, what are the deadlines? So when do the maps have to be drawn and finalized from your end? November 1st. November 1st. And they're not going to happen, probably. Okay. Because the census data isn't going to be finalized, we're being told by the Census Bureau until September 30th. And you, if, if we were ready to go with final maps on September 30th and give 45 days for public comment, that's past November 1st. Right. So uh, we attempted to get the Supreme Court of Michigan to say, okay, you can have more time. And they basically said, no. Right. Uh, you, you, you're too early. Right. Uh, maybe you'll get it done. Maybe you won't. Uh, you know, come back and talk to us if you got a problem later. Uh, so, that, I mean, we're going to continue. We we are continuing with the work with the uh, information that we have, and and we're not devoid of information. We have information that we're going to work with. We just don't have the final. Final, final information. With the uh, the drawing of the congressional districts, uh, do you foresee, is there any uh, potential that uh, the districts will look way different than what they did previously before this process with this new census? Um, how will that impact our legislated, our folks that are, that are um, our legislators? How will that impact those that are certainly now in office? So um, do you expect that they're anticipating a surprise or I'm presuming some people may be disappointed? How would you, how does the commission plan to deal with that? Well, our plan to deal with it is to uh, draw what we consider to be fair mm -hmm. districts, uh, congressional, state senate, and state reps. Um, I'm sure that there will be some people who are going to be happy. Sure. Some people are going to be very disappointed. Yeah. Some people aren't uh, uh, are going to be really upset, and we, we anticipate we're going to get sued. Mm. Uh, California and uh, Arizona both uh, were. 
Uh, they uh, have told us expect it. We do expect it. And what we're tr what we're doing is we are uh, in our process. We're going to be very clear as to here is why we drew this district this way. Here's what we took into consideration: population, compactness, communities of interest, the things that we're supposed to do, sure. and we're going to put that in the record. All right. Well, I think that's a, a good place to leave it, uh, Commissioner. There's so much more I'm sure we could talk about, as this is certainly a very important process. I want to thank you for spending time with us today to share some insight into all that's going on uh, with uh, the congressional districts and uh, looking at the census data and working to redraw the lines. And so I, uh, we really appreciate the conversation today. Well, thank you for having us, and uh, I'll look for you at either Grand Traverse or Treetops. <laughs> well, that does it for this week's Insights. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at news at WBKB11.com. I'm Sherry Stewart. Thank you again for watching, and have a great week. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.